Hello America, today is February 4th, 2016. I uh, have Lavoie Finnicum's obituary here. His funeral and viewing will be held tomorrow. I do believe it's a clo closed casket though. Anyway, um, it's all here and I'll leave the links below, of course. And I'm going to let you hear an interview with Brianna Bundy um, while you look at this. Anyway, here we go before when we were visiting with Lori Storm on the air reporting live from Oregon this morning I had told you that we would do our best to have Brianna Bundy join us again this morning on the airwaves of KSDZ and KDJL radio and that young lady the mother of uh, a gob and a bunch of children didn't get to sleep in this morning and never does that's the way it goes when you have a bunch of little kids in your house and Brianna I'm glad you're up and able to visit with us this morning it's nice to have you join us on the airwaves how are you this morning Oh, I'm good. Well, good. I'm glad to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Children all been fed, right? Oh, yeah. All all the babies been fed. We're good enough. <laughs> well, Bri Brianna, I had a nice visit with Lori on the air this morning. We learned some things that we sure didn't know before. And we will be posting that interview along with our discussion with you this morning. We'll be posting that on our website. We're streaming it live as we visit, but we will be posting it on our website at uh, twisterradio.com under the free speech zone button. So, Brianna, obviously you didn't get the chance to hear Lori's interview this morning, but yourself, you have some additional information, some insights, some things that you'd like to share with the listeners, and I'm just going to turn it over to you, young lady, and let you update us from your viewpoint. Um, well, I think uh, the boys, you know, they were, uh, all of them that are in there, they've been kind of struggling, especially at the way they've, they've treated Shauna, and then obviously with um, LaVoy's death and then his services coming up this weekend and um, which I should bring that up um, we're going to do a tribute to LaVoy um, immediately following um, his funeral services and we're asking for any cowboys to bring their horses and be saddled and ready to come to Kanab and ride along uh, with us with our flags and um Anyways, just go clear through town on horses and show everybody that we know Lavoy, we respect Lavoy, we love Lavoy, and we're not gonna we're not gonna forget about him. We're gonna continue to press forward. Absolutely, and you so. know, people in and people in this listening area. I'll be honest with you, Brianna. Uh, there's word has been passed out. There's a lot of people that will be flying their flag at half staff. There are others that will be actually mm -hmm. flying the flag upside down. America in distress in honor of Lavoy. Yes, and that that means a lot. I think that's uh, I think that's completely appropriate, and I think that um, the world like if this is this isn't going away. We're not going to forget about uh, Lavoy and just leave him hanging. I don't care if the feds think that they're immune to prosecution or not. Whether anybody is actually prosecuted for this, the world's going to know and. The Lord knows, and Lavoy is His witness, and you know this. It the justice will be served in one way or another, but the country will not forget. Well, we know in time that justice will be served. Uh, vengeance, yeah. vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and it's very difficult for the rest of us to want to wait quite that long, isn't it? It is. It's it's a hard thing to do, and I think that's why there's a. Uh, so much passion in Oregon right now with and all over the world with protesters and people holding candlelight vigils and all kinds of things like that. Um, I mean, I don't I don't think there's a better person on this planet than what Lavoie was. He truly is the the closest thing to to the Lord that I've ever met. He was just a the, the spirit that that man held, I mean, he he was an unbelievable man. That's all there is to it. I mean, well, and I'm, I'm not just saying that because he was our friend. I mean, I'm saying that because there's a few people that come into your life that have an impact on you, and Lavoie had an impact on all. Well, sure. 
You know, those of us out here in this corner of the world, obviously, we did not know this man at all. That's uh-huh. all there is to it. Uh, what little we know about him, we have learned through you and through others. And we appreciate the insight that you have shared with us here. I'm curious, when we start talking about uh, Ammon Bundy and the rest of the gentlemen that are incarcerated there in Portland, do you have any idea how things at this point in time are shaping up for them? I don't understand personally, according to the Constitution, they have a right to bail. That obviously has not happened. Now, we know that uh, Roger Roots, he is an attorney that we have visited with on the airwaves here, even on uh, the Twister. He has sat in the control room with me, and we have visited a couple of different times over the course of the years. But uh, Roger, out of Montana, has uh, arrived and is with Lori, and they have a meeting with Ryan Payne this morning. And I know that there's a number of different things they will be discussing. There may even be a news conference right there in Portland after... Uh, They have visited with Ryan, and we'll hope that that comes to pass. But I'm I'm curious to know if you have any kind of an indication uh, from Ammond. Have you had the opportunity to be able to visit with him or his attorney or any of the other men? Um, He's been in contact uh, with his wife. Um, They've all been able to call their wives. They only get one phone call, so, you know, obviously it's important that they talk to their wife and children Why, right sure. now and so i even talked to them personally um i was shared a quite a funny story um uh brian uh cavalier that um is also known as buddha he's uh he's still being held and that we were talking about well, what do you guys need you know like do you guys need uh scriptures or you know what what do you get? Do you guys have access to that? Because it's important that you can, you stay close to the Lord and keep His Spirit with you, so you guys can get through this. Uh-huh. Well, uh, apparently Buddha went on hunger strike, and he refused to eat until everyone in that uh, uh, prison, the the ten that are in there, all got scriptures, and they were like, "No, we're we're not giving them to you." And he's like, "All right, well, I'll just hold out." And when I go to court, I'm a big old boy. So when I keep showing up to court getting smaller and smaller, and they ask, I'm going to say, you guys have refused to feed me. So you guys want to play games? I'll just starve myself, and I'll tell them you guys aren't feeding me. <laughs> <laughs> so they all had scriptures. <laughs> they all have them now. Well, good, <laughs> good. So I thought, you know, he's, he's like, you know, you guys want to play games? I'll play games, too. Well, it's, it's, so it, they're still fighters, even in jail. They're still fighters. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. And, you know, Lori was telling us this morning that coming up this Saturday, there will be a, a protest march. They're hoping for in excess of 100 people there that are actually going to march into the refuge. And the theory is that they're going to walk back out with all of the people that are there and help see to their safety. Now, it's my understanding that the refuge and the town of Burns, Oregon, are absolutely overloaded with uh, armored vehicles and all kinds of weapons. So we'll hope, oh, yeah. we'll hope, we'll con- sincerely hope and pray here that this doesn't turn into a major bloodbath. Yeah, and, you know, I, I think the, the country that night before, they need to, we need to pray for them and... You know, if you believe in fasting, we also need to fast for these people because it needs to happen. They need to get those people out of there. And like you said, it needs to happen safely so that there's not serious bloodshed because I'm that's what we've been uh, been afraid of. And the only way that's going to happen is if we have support in numbers. Absolutely. Brianna, uh, before our time runs out here, as we look down the road here a little ways, and hopefully uh, these men are given bail at some point in time, and hopefully that happens soon, but this uh, whole thing is far from over. The 
the undercurrent as we look at what has gone on and is going on in Burns, Oregon at the refuge as far as the BLM land is concerned, those battles literally are being fought all across the United States of America. Even in Wyoming, uh, there's been a big uh, push come out of the Obama administration to stop all of the coal leases. I mean, the list goes on and on. Eventually, even here in Nebraska, the ranch community here will find themselves literally under siege of the federal government at some point down the road over water. I mean, the list of infractions by the government toward the people, toward personal property landowners, uh, personal property rights, if you will, there just continues to be an extreme overreach. And we will hope that there is some good that comes out of the tragedy that has raised its ugly head in Burns, Oregon. Absolutely. You know, as long as any uh, citizen of this country has rights and control of any sort of resource, they are going to come after it. And I don't believe that they'll stop until they have complete control. And so, yeah, it's important. You know, I mean, we can't can't continue to let it happen, and we have to stand with our neighbors. I mean, we have to stand with strangers if that's what it takes, and we have to protect each other or it's just going to continue on. It'll go past land and resources. It'll involve our children. It'll involve... You know, and if if we don't continue on, what will the, will there, there be left for our children and our grandchildren? And then will our children and grandchildren read our journals after we're gone and say, "Yeah, they just sat and watched them," right. or will they say, "My goodness, our parents and grandparents they fought so hard so that we can enjoy our liberties today." That's and right. That's, and you know, sure. You know, when we when we go back to the uh, Bundy Ranch. Uh, here a few years back. When we go back to that, there was an undercurrent there as far as uh, mineral resources were concerned. Harry Reid's name came into play there, among others. When you look at the situation going on at the refuge in Burns, Oregon, if you want to do a little searching on the Internet and you begin to look at Mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton and some of the others involved there, there are articles that came out of the New York Times, out of the Wall Street Journal, out of the Post, Washington Post, and so forth, that are giving a person a little bit of an insight into uh, the uranium situation there in Burns, Oregon, and it involves the Russians. And you say to yourself, is that why we're making such a big deal out of this? Now, I'm not talking about uh, the Bundys. I'm not talking about the patriots that are there. I'm talking about the government that is there and the heavy hand that they are using at this point in time because, obviously, this messes up the government's plans. Oh, absolutely, you know. I mean, they're robbing from from their own country. These Be- greedy politicians and greedy special interest groups and everything else. And there's definitely, I mean, it, 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 this was bigger than a couple of ranchers that refused to sell out and make a national park. I mean, this is... There, there's a lot on the line. They've promised things to other people, and they've got it. They've got to make it happen, and they have no consciences at all. And it doesn't matter to them if they, you know, gun a couple of people down. I mean, it means that our lives have no value to them. It sure doesn't seem that way. It doesn't. Well, Brianna, our time is getting short here this morning, and I do want to thank you again very kindly for visiting with us on the air. It looks like as the day goes on, there will be some additional information that will be coming our way and hopefully important information that that, that we can share uh, with you and with our listeners here on KSDZ and KDJL Radio. Anxious for the report back from Lori and Roger out in Portland as we speak. And I know that Lori plans to be back in uh, uh, Burns, Oregon for the march coming up on Saturday. And we'll hope that everyone remains safe there and that the government actually utilizes their head for a change. That would be something new, but I would like to see that happen personally. So, yes, we, we definitely would, too. Yes, and Brianna, again, my best to you and your family. Uh, you greet Cliven and his wife, Carol, I believe it is. I don't know those folks, yeah. obviously, but uh, greet them if you would for us. And we thank you so much for joining us on the airwaves of the Twister this morning. 
hey, you're welcome, and thank you to those out in your listening area in Nebraska for all of your love and support and prayers. That's greatly appreciated. Thank you again. Listeners, stay with us. Uh, West Plains LLC has the latest ag market report for you, and one of the sponsors of the Free Speech Zone, RNL Ag, has a special message coming up in a moment, too. So do stay with us.